Hey everyone, I'm here with Amy Milne. Hey Amy. Hey Alex, how are you? Just great. I have to tell you, your show was so unusual and so inspiring. And oh. to give everybody a little sniglet, um, tell tell everybody what it was about, but don't give it all away. Okay. Okay. Well, we uh, the show was about kids and kids quilting through history and also kids quilting now. And we shared quilts made by kids mm -hmm. that were loaned to me by um, people all over the country who work with kids. Um, and we looked at those quilts. We looked at a really special quilt that was loaned to me by uh, Sandra Starley, a quilt historian from 1911 that had just just full of information about the makers. And uh, we talked about how we can motivate and encourage kids to start quilting. You know, it, you are with the Quilt Alliance and right. um, you have a really great fundraiser. And I will tell about this because um, it's fabulous. You sell these basically to go quilt kits mm -hmm. that are for kids and it has everything in it they could need right and, yeah and and basically everyone it's like a printed panel of like a lemoyne star is that what it was if i recall yeah, yeah. we're called the alliance star but it's based on a lemoyne yeah. star and and the idea is that then the kids can quilt the whole thing and then label it which i'll have you talk about in a second um and it's their first quilting experience now what i want to share with you amy is that i took it down to my babies in los angeles and the oldest one is six or six and a half seven i'm a bad bubby i don't know these things and she, she couldn't handle the quilting but she can handle say embroidery over it or stitching the three layers kind of stopped her and then and then we had um uh I, isla, isla i'm going to say her name wrong isla on? isla, I think isla, that's right. isla and isla. she could do it and we're guessing she was what nine or ten she could quilt that baby yeah I think that's a really good point to make. We had a four-year-old in the booth recently at a uh -huh. show in Asheville, and she made stitches that were probably this long. You know, she was point, and we just said, that's great. Have a good, you know, and the she, point for she, it to be. She could do all three layers? She could, but she was also unusually dexterous for somebody that okay. age. You know, she was really, and, and we weren't like, there was no right or wrong way for her to oh, do absolutely. it. absolutely. Know? So she was just really enjoying pushing it. But, but I think there's so many ways to do it. But I think the ideal age is probably maybe starting at eight yeah. and then going up. Yeah. yeah. And we had a couple adults buy the kit for themselves, which was interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, everybody, um, they're 20 bucks and um, all the proceeds go to Quilt Alliance. So mm -hmm. that is fabulous. Now, what's going on for you right now with Houston around the corner? <laughs> right. So we are we are um, very busy getting ready for our booth at festival, and that includes the kits. We have um, lots of kits to sell, but we're also trying to, as we always do, try to get people excited about labeling uh, and documenting their quilts. So we'll have a big display of um, the kids' quilts, but we'll also have a whole wall dedicated to making the point about why we label, how quickly a quilt can become anonymous, a quilt maker can become anonymous. Um, because as we both know, when we talked about this on the show, that most quilts outlive their maker. And if there's nothing attached to that quilt to say who made it, when it was made, where it was made, that story is going to fade uh, as the quilt does. And we don't want that to happen. There's no, there's no need for that. So that's our mission is to really um, encourage people to put the story with their quilt. Well, and even in, in your kit, too, you've got a label in there. Yep. And and I had the kids fill it out, and it was like, I'm making this with my bubby. I mean, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's so, built into the quilt so that that's the first step we suggest is that they fill it out. So good for you. And and you're on the top of the heap at a festival. What's your booth number? <laughs> We're in the booth number one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how this happened. It's a little confusing because it's not like in the 100 row proper, but we're towards the back 
in that 100 row, conveniently located near the bathroom. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and it's also a bathroom that's on the same level, if I remember correctly. You don't have to go down right. all the stairs. Yes. You so know? we know you're going to want to come by our booth uh, at one point or another during this show. But no, that's that's where we usually are. It's nice. We're with other nonprofits. MD Anderson is there. You know, our sister nonprofits are all around us. And it's just you can – it's right behind the um, – Make and take it, uh, but that's not what it's called, but where you learn, uh, you can sit and watch demos. Right. And I think, I think if I'm correct, you walk into the festival hall, turn mm -hmm. right and head back. And that's how that's you do right. it. Okay. Exactly. It's right on that line where you cross over to the exhibition hall. So Amy, I want to tell you that your show really did strike me because you did bring quilts from other makers, young makers, and the mm -hmm. stories were just astonishing. But but more than that, what you're bringing to the table to, to, to the quilting world today is honorable, it's fabulous, and on behalf of everybody, I wanna thank you because your mission is right on the money. Thank you so much. And, and you have, you and Ricky have been, you know, supporters of ours for forever. And we've documented you both in our work. And I think it just takes a, a, those with the big megaphone like you do yeah. to uh, let people know about it because it's an issue that we can all get behind. Hey, uh, is the information also on the website? It is. You can get to the Kids Quilt stuff on kidsquilt.org okay. or from the quiltalliance.org site. And of course, we've got all kinds of information about our projects. We even have a labeling pledge. I don't know if I mentioned this, no. Alex, Alex, but we have this funny. It's it's kind of a joke, but it's not a joke. It's, not. It's, a, it's a place for quilters to say, I pledge to label all my quilts whether they're ones that I make or ones that I acquire. And the benefit you, you, you get is the reminder, but you can also win some labels. So if you go to uh, our website and look up quilt pledge or labeling pledge, you can sign up that way. I'm kind of like feeling really naughty right now. <laughs> I'm horrible at it. You're like, should I make that commitment? I, I don't know. Hey, well, let me ask you this. Does it count if I take a felt tip pen and just write all the stuff on the back? I mean, am I going to be in label jail? You are not going to be in label jail. I mean, the best thing is to put that pen, an archival pen, yes. on a cotton piece of fabric and stitch it down. But if you feel like the only way that quilt is going to get labeled is for you to do that, then I say do it. Awesome. You know, our whole idea behind making these really simple labels is to de-precious the process, you know. Right, right. It just needs to get done. It doesn't have to be perfect. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to have to <laughs> wrestle with this guilt all day. <laughs> Because I should. It's ridiculous that I'm, you know, because my kids might know, but after right. them, no one else is going to know. Exactly. So my job here is done. Your guilt is not. No, I don't want you to feel bad, but I do want to motivate you. I love this interview. Oh, gosh. Well, I look forward to getting a big fat hug from you, okay? Oh, me too. Me too, Alex. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. Okay, you too. Okay, bye-bye.